Hello, this is Royal Height, the music ambassador of the Royal Height of Music podcast. Our goal is taking our music to the world. Get the word out now. Let everybody know who you are, where you are, and what you do. Sponsors, advertisers, and affiliates, you're welcome to join us. Join us here at the Royal Height of Music Podcast. Contact us at VeroRecords at gmail.com or call us at 1-888-666-3645. That's 1-888-666-3645. Good morning, good morning. This is Royal Height, the music ambassador. Welcome to the Royal Height of Music podcast, uh, where our theme is taking our music to the world. And today I am truly honored to have a gentleman that for years I admired from afar because he was with some of the coolest musicians and entertainers around the world. And uh, in the like, I mean, likes of Skip Mahoney and the Casuals, People like the Manhattans and, and Blue Magic and the Stylists and, and on and on and on and on. But anyway, as it would be, fate allowed me the opportunity to meet him up close and personal. And since then, we have uh, had the pleasure of uh, actually being in many, many different functions together. And I've gotten to know him just a little bit better than I did a long time ago. But today, I am truly honored to get a chance to be up close and personal with him and put him on the hot seat and just have him to open up and reveal, not only to me, but to our audience, just a little bit about it. Today, my honored guest is none other than one of the most renowned and prolific promoters out of the Washington, D.C. metro area. He's done things all over the place. But uh, I'm not going to try to steal his thunder. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to have my friend, Mr. Gerard Pinkney of GP Promotions. Good morning, Gerard. Good morning, Royal. I tell you, that's quite an introduction. Uh, uh, You have quite a resume yourself. So, (laughs) But since the interview is on me, I won't get into that. But uh, I know your resume, too, some of it. And uh, that's quite impressive. But uh, it's good to be on your show, and uh, you know I look forward to this uh, conversation. But uh, Gerard, the reason why I got in touch with you is because I'm not only interested, but I thought so many others would be interested because they everybody goes to show, everybody loves to see shows, but there's a lot of work that goes into it before the show happens. Uh, that uh, the back office, so to speak, where the business part of the show is taking uh, taking place in order to get entertainers. You have to do everything from get contracts with them, make sure they have all the equipment and uh, place reserved and accommodations during the time of performance. And even after the performance, there are a lot of things that go into it. So this morning, if you would, uh, before we get even into that, would you be kind enough just to give us a little good background information about yourself, where you're from, and, and some of your accomplishments in the past? You know, what, what are your roots? Right. Uh, I'm from the uh, Washington, D.C. area. I was born in D.C. Uh, I grew up in Capitol Heights. I'm a preacher's kid, you know, so I grew up in the church. PK, PK. Right, right. My father was a pastor all of my life. Uh, so I grew up in the church and um, I really uh, did not really get interested in R&B music until I was about 16 or 17 years old and uh, I just uh, loved music. I went on to college, I graduated from Morgan State University where I was uh, involved with uh, several music groups, uh, some of my uh, fraternity brothers are the ones that formed the group Pockets that used to travel with uh, Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, so I was involved in uh, that, 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 and I just uh, loved music. And I came to the promotion business kind of 
actually kind of late, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I was fortunate and I met the right people and that's really how I got involved with it. Well, one of the things that I know has changed, I know uh, the music business itself has changed tremendously over the last 15, 20 years. And those that have survived all of the changes, including this COVID, are the ones that remain progressive. Uh, music has changed, uh, the way business is done with the entertainers, uh, the way the record companies act with their a and R and development and, and even the promotion because you got a lot of entertainers that are, are virtually independent artists nowadays. So, uh, what what can you say? Uh, some of the things that uh, would make a good promoter. What 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 makes you a standout and has had you able to survive all of the changes that have taken place in the industry? Well, you know. Um I guess uh, persistence uh, is one of the main things. Uh, uh, with myself, I was fortunate. Uh, I didn't, uh, I can't say I really started at the bottom, but I did get involved with uh, promoting shows. Actually, uh, accidentally, I used to be with a group of brothers and we used to do some parties and local stuff. and. You know, um, a friend came to me and said, well, you know, I know Gerald Austin, maybe he'll come down and do a show for you, you guys. And uh, uh, that's really what started it. Um, when we, it, when it was time to do the show, actually, uh, <laughs> my partner sort of backed out and uh, the, the individual uh, who uh, knew Gerald, volunteered to uh, go in with me. So we did our first show with Gerald Austin at uh, Zanzibar on the waterfront. And it was a very successful show. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the owners were, they were caught by surprise. They didn't even have enough food uh, for the crowd that I had, which was, that was kind of uh, crazy, but uh, they did not expect it to be uh, as successful. And I pretty much went on from there. The next uh, actually act that I presented uh, was Gene Chandler. So I, I didn't start at the bottom. So that uh, 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 that was a big help me. And uh, once I uh, got into it and, and started meeting people and establishing relationships, uh, uh, things just went pretty smoothly. Excellent. Well, a lot of people don't realize that in promotions, the whole game is predicated on who knows who. Right. Uh, you know, right. when you can get directly with the people who make the decisions, as far as uh, people who can make commitments for the artist, for one, right. uh, club owners or venues that will allow you to have events, that makes a big, big difference. Uh, around here locally, uh, do you have any preferences for certain venues at this time? Because I like that things have changed. Right, things have changed. Uh, uh, right now, um, I've uh, sort of have a preference for Bethesda Blues and Jazz. I, I have a relationship with, uh, with them and uh, some of my best and biggest shows have been at Bethesda Blues and Jazz. Um, for example, uh, I've, uh, I've had Ray Goodman and Brown there and uh, I, I have my own band that uh, Phil and the Funk Band, which was a band that uh, myself and uh, Keith uh, Showtime Busey put together. Yeah, and we, right, right. And we put that put that band together and they've been there a couple of times and actually uh, before COVID hit uh, I had uh, two pretty big shows that scheduled there that uh, was uh, tickets were doing very well I had uh, Enchantment and uh, Ray Goodman and Brown on the same show and 
that was scheduled for April of 2020. And then in May of 2020, I had scheduled uh, Russell Tompkins and the New Stylistics and Eddie Holman. And both of those shows, basically they've been postponed. I still, I still intend to go forward with those shows when things, you know, when the people come back. I'm not going to uh, base my return on uh, the opening of the venues. I'm going to base it on when the people are ready to come back. So, okay. uh, yeah, but that, that would be my venue of preference. I had to work my way up to that venue. Of course, I've been in a lot of smaller venues, which I enjoy. I've done lots of shows at Harmony Hall uh, for Washington, Public Playhouse, uh, uh, and uh, several other uh, venues uh, in the area. So, uh, uh, but right now, I'm focusing on, you know, my larger shows being at Bethesda Blues and Jazz. Okay. And uh, like I said, with the, hopefully with now that we have a vaccine and everything, things will be kind of opening up. What's, uh, do you have anything in the near future that's coming up that people might be interested in? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I decided to... Uh, do something at the end of June. I, I know the president said by 4th of July, everything, you know, should be starting to open up. And uh, I decided to put together a show at one of uh, the venues that I use, uh, a local venue called Eloquent Touch Ballroom. And uh, I entitled the, the show actually, GP Promotions Presents Got My Shots, Welcome Back Cabaret. And right. uh, it's, it's going to be featuring my Feel in the Funk band and also another great local band uh, called uh, Forever Yours. And they do a OJ's tribute. So I'm going to have them as a special guest. And uh, the unique thing about this particular show is that uh, actually uh, uh, I'm going to do. Uh, Handle the tickets personally because uh, I'm not we're, I'm not going to be doing full capacity. The place uh, handles about two 200 people. I'm going to sell about 125 tickets and screen the uh, people coming f because uh, I want to make sure everybody is vaccinated. So uh, that's the you know if you're not vaccinated then uh, you certainly you're not going to have preference. Let's put it that way. Uh, and uh, so far, the ticket sales have been great. The people are very excited about getting out again. So I'm sort of using that as a test to see, you know, if the people are ready to come out. Uh, it's still going to masks are still going to be required. And like I said, uh, I'm only going to uh, sell 125 tickets. So uh, that's going to take place on June the 27th. It's on a Sunday at six o'clock at the Eloquent Touch Room, which is one of the very nice new uh, venues in the area. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I expect uh, to have, have a great time. They have a dance floor. People love to uh, dance to the music of the Fill in the Funk Band because it's a 70s funk band. And I don't have to tell you what the music was like. Oh, they rock. I know they rock, yes. So. Yes, uh, yes. It's a it's a good time. Showtime. Oh yeah, showtime. So uh, that's what I have planned, and then later on in the year, then I'll get back to the uh, hopefully the postponed shows that I have at various other venues. Okay. Okay. Well, it sounds like you got your work cut out for you. Now let yes. me ask, uh, as far as the promotions business, right. Uh, in the this area, do you take on? Are you mainly focused on just promoting shows, or do you actually now work with, say, individual groups that you try to pump them up and promote them? Because I know at one time you used to do a lot of work with Skip Mahoney and the Casuals. Well, yes, I mean I managed Skip Mahoney and the Casuals for about five years, and uh, um, we traveled all over the world, actually. Uh, and um, I, it, it was kind of a, a blessing to me, really, to get involved with them. I was promoting shows, like I said, and uh, I think about the fourth show that uh, I did 
was uh, with Skip Mahoney and the Casuals. And the, the uh, thing about it is they weren't even together at the time. But uh, I, I met Spunky, the drummer. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, he he's a drummer, but he's Hopefully, a I, I, casual. I, right. And, uh, you know, I asked him, well, what's Skip and them doing? You know, what's the group doing? And at the time, they, they were sort of not doing anything. So I told him I wanted to do a show with them at the... Uh, Zanzibar on the waterfront, and uh, we did the show, and uh, about which was very successful. And about a year later, they came to me and uh, asked me if I would manage them. I had no experience in managing groups, but uh, I took it on because they were friends. Actually, I went to school with uh, Skip and George. I went to Central High School, which is schools they graduated from. So I took it on, and, and it was a, a real great experience for me. And like I said, we traveled all over the world, you know. Uh, so uh, that, but uh, in terms of management, the only groups that I'm managing now is my Fill in the Funk Band, and I also work with uh, uh, with uh, Keith with his uh, uh, group, you know. So uh, uh, that's what we do. That's that. That's what I'm doing right now. Hey, well, like I said, I, again, like I said, it looks like you got your work cut out for you. And uh, as we move along, and one of the things that uh, I do know that as we move ahead and and actually move, hopefully, out of this 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 period of time, the COVID season. Right. What are some of your future plans? What are some of the uh, right. do you? Have you ever thought about maybe doing a festival or something really on a, a large scale? Have you ever thought of that? Oh, yes. Uh, Is that in uh, plans? Well, uh, I, I, I do want to do an uh, outdoor funk festival, uh, but uh, the time has to be right. I can't, uh, I really don't foresee doing that one this summer, perhaps next summer. But uh, like it's like I was saying, uh, in 2020, I had big plans really uh, that sort of fell through because not only uh, uh, did I have uh, those groups booked, uh, Enchantment, uh, Ray Goodman and Brown, Eddie Holman, uh, you know, the stylistics, but I also had Melba Moore uh, uh, booked. Uh, I, ha- I had the Persuaders. I had Blue Magic, I, I had the Intruders, I had a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and they're still, you know, under contract and we still uh, plan to go forward with the shows. So uh, I, I, I did I did have a lot on my plate and I, I, those shows, like I said, they've been postponed, they haven't been canceled. So uh, that's, that's what I have to focus on right now, getting those shows, uh, you know, Produced and, and, and done, so uh, uh, that that's going to be my main focus when things open back up is is uh, doing those shows that I already have planned. Okay, okay. Well, like I say, you you know a little bit about me. I I'm, I'm, I do music just a little bit. Yeah. But uh, right here at the Royal uh, Royal Height uh, a Music Podcast, we are. You know, our interest is, is exposing other people, letting people know what other people are doing. But uh, in, in that vein, I also would like to ask you now, music is so powerful in terms of how it affects people. We all know that uh, something is, as simple as uh, a, a, a good song can not only lift your spirits, but change your whole mood. Now, what what uh? What, what type of music do you see or what do you see for the future of R&B music right now as young people are moving more and more into the industry and everything like that? And there is a big emphasis because a lot of people are interested in preserving the legacies that have already been established. But for, for, for young people, what do, you, what do you see happening with the music today? Well, um, I don't, you know, I, I, I really... I don't know a lot about uh, the music, uh, the young people. I mean, you really talk because I got a grandson. Music he listens to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not that uh, familiar with. But I, there are some groups out there like Bruno Mars, uh, uh, 
Morris and uh, Anderson Pack and uh, some artists out there that uh, I just love their music and uh, uh, that's the new R&B and, and that's what I'm interested in. I've done, you know, some newer music. I Actually, my biggest show uh, that I've ever put on, that was at the Baltimore Convention Center and that was with uh, Eric Benet and that was a great show. Where there were 4,000 people, you know, so uh, uh, I, I primarily focus on 70s music, 70s, 80s, but uh, uh, I enjoy really uh, most music and uh, I really don't uh, uh, have any real plans right now to do any of the uh, younger acts, actually, you know, the popular acts because they're, they're too expensive. I'm, a, you know, a sole proprietor and uh, I have relationships. I actually, someone needs to keep the old school alive anyway. So that's... <laughs> well, that's, I, I, that's I'll tell you what, you know, one of the things that, that I've actually recently launched and, and will be introducing to you is Venro Radio, which is an internet radio program and we're actually up and running already. And we're following up with Venro TV, where we're going to be featuring uh, primarily, like I said, the old school uh, artists, all the way back to the doo-wop. You know, you right. know, my, my, my roots are starting in the doo-wop. Oh, yeah. But, uh, and we're going to be inviting you to possibly get some of your groups to, you know, be a part of it. We, we right. are looking to do personal interviews with a lot of artists because... We have a nonprofit organization, Black Music Awareness Foundation, which you, you're somewhat familiar with because right, right. you're listed as one of our uh, music advisors. Right. But the Black Music Awareness Foundation, what we're going to be doing is we're actually documenting the legacies of different groups and artists to add to uh, you know the pool of information available to young people who are interested in music history, Black music history as well as uh, teaching them about the business of music. Uh, we do that through our nonprofit arm, and we certainly will have to call on you to help you. You might want to be uh, a participant in some of the events that we're doing. We do plan on having things, uh, everything from fundraising to scholarships for kids to uh, maybe get music lessons and, and learn music. So we're doing all of that now. I certainly would be interested. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I'm certainly in a give give back fa phase of my life, and that's uh, my interest in giving back. And, and uh, because uh, um, I've been blessed, and, and and you know, just like Patty Gabell uh, says in her song, "If you've been blessed, pass it on." And that's that's, that's, cool. really, yeah. that's where I'm at in my life, passing it on. Well, I'll tell you what, I've, I've enjoyed talking with you so far today, and in the future, we will be calling on you again. But before we close, if you will, if you be kind enough, would you just share some insight? What kind of uh, words of wisdom would you share with our audience about music and its importance and, and uh, right. how, 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 it, how is it? How, how has been important to you in your life so far? Right, right. Well, you know, again, I have to go back to my childhood, my roots, uh, uh, and that that was it in gospel music. I grew up uh, in my household. The only thing we listened to was uh, Mahalia Jackson, uh, Clara Ward, uh, uh, harmonizing for, and that's. That's where I really uh, gained my love for music. And music uh, uh, brings people joy. You know, some people don't have a lot of joy in their lives. And uh, I mean, I, I live in a, um, uh, I would say it's a senior complex, uh, over, over 55. And a lot of the uh, 
people who live here. They've been to my various events because uh, if it hasn't been uh, some of the shows at Harmony Hall, right here in Fort Washington is where I live, and that's where Harmony. I, I, when I do shows at places like Bethesda Blues and Jazz, uh, I will personally uh, hire charter buses so that they can come to the shows because uh, I know that uh, some people that's all they have is their joy of music and, 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 and if I can do something to uplift people and I know that's what music does it uplifts people so that that gives me joy it's uh, it's it, it, it's not about the money anymore it's about uh, having people to receive music because like I said music is uh, is a joy to many people and a lot of people that's that's what they rely on to get them through so uh, I uh, that's that's why I'm in the business right now to bring right. joy to people right, reminds me of that that lyric in, uh, from one of OJ's songs I love music music is the healing force of the world yes it is yes, understood it is. by every man woman boy and so That's Gerard exactly. Pinkney, I, I, I thank you. Now, the last thing I would like to ask you before sure. we close, would you be kind enough to share with the audience? Maybe someone is interested in having a show they might have need of entertainment uh, through you. How right. could our audience be in touch with you? What would be the best means to contact you? Oh, I'm, I'm very easy to contact. Uh, I am on Facebook under my name, Gerard Pinkney. Uh, I uh, have a website, uh, which you can connect with me on that. It's www.gp-promotions.com. My uh, my email address actually is uh, Gerard Pinkney one at AOL.com. And I don't even mind giving out my phone number uh, because uh, uh, I want people to actually get in touch with me. If it's something I can do to help, I will. And my phone number is 301-503-8400. And if there's anything that I can do to help, I I, I, I take pride in the fact that, uh, you know, I help other promoters, you know, younger promoters are just getting established. You know, I, I'm not someone who, who feels like, you know, it's a competition. It's not a competition. It's, it's enough out here for everyone. And uh, to be a, a great promoter, you have to, you have to endure some hard times, but you have to uh, keep going, you know, don't give up. And, and uh, I feel like uh, you'll be successful. A lot of a lot of people, you know, they, you know, they, you start, know, they start out and they take one hit and they're not, they figure that's not for me. But no, you, you can't do that. You know, you have to be persistent. So uh, again, like I said, uh, if there's, you know, someone who has a question or want to get in touch with me, that's how you can do it. All right. Well, again, Gerard, I certainly, uh, like I said, not only honored, but I appreciate you taking your time from your busy schedule just to sit down with me. This has been entertaining as well as very informative. I feel like I know you even a lot better now. Well, thank I'll you. I'll be calling on you. I'll be, I'm going to back you Gloria, up. Uh, hey, Gloria, you know, you know you got it like that with me. Oh, no, right. <laughs> you got it like that with me. You I know that. much, much appreciate you coming. And, and before I close to my audience, I'd like to remind all of our audience out there today again that if you're liking what you hear at the Royal Height Music, Royal Height of Music podcast, uh, you might want to consider joining us as an affiliate. Uh, as an advertiser, even as a sponsor, uh, we do invite you to come on board. You can check us out. You can go to venrorecords.com. That's V-E-N-R-O, records with an S, dot com. You can subscribe to our website. You can check out our new uh, uh, Venro radio, radio station that's up and running. 
and also contact me if you'd like to get in touch with Mr. Gerard Pinkney or any of the other people that we've had on our podcast. Uh, we are a growing concern because, you know, we are really trying to do what we can to make a positive impact in music by networking with people, bringing them together, because that's been one of the biggest flaws in the music industry where people weren't able to bridge between each other to help each other, as Mr. Ping has already said. So we are involved with that. We are very serious about that. And we invite you to come back again. We, you know, we're on the air every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Joining this is uh, honor again, Mr. Pinkney. Uh, any closing words you'd like to say to the audience before we get out of here? Yeah, I, I, I did uh, forget to mention that uh, I am heavily on uh, YouTube. I have four different channels on YouTube. So if you'd like to see uh, some of my shows, my concerts, I have over 500 videos on YouTube. You just uh, go to uh, YouTube and search Calvin Pinckney. I have two uh, uh, two uh, channels under Calvin Pinckney. I have one under CG Pink, and I also have one under Gerard Pinckney. So if you're ever bored and want to see some great entertainment, then uh, go to my uh, YouTube channels, and uh, that'll keep you up all night. Trust me. All right, all right. Well, Mr. Pink Gerard, I thank you again so much for taking out your time and invite you again to come back. We plan on doing a lot of other things that I certainly can see where you would be just a perfect fit to be a part of what we're doing. And again, just keep up the good work, man. I'm, I'm very proud. I'm always honored to be around people that are doing things because it's an inspiration, not only to me, but all the other people. When you consider this COVID season, it is good to see black heroes, and you're one of them, man. You're one Thank of them. you. I appreciate that, Roy, and uh, I appreciate you having me on. All right, and as we close this evening again, this is Royal Hype, the music ambassador, reminding you to stay tuned every Thursday night on our website, on our Facebook page, and view this video along with a whole lot of other ones uh, as we continue to take our music to the world. Thanks a lot, Mr. Pickney. Thank you.